Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have got three things to show you today. Two perfumes and one product. They are all new to me and the perfumes I've not smelt yet so you're going to get my first impressions kind of live right now. So I'm going to start with Freddie Albrighton's latest fragrance. He very kindly sent me a sample. I had no idea he was going to send this to me. It just arrived out of nowhere, but I was so pleased to receive it. Someone else's flowers. So Freddie's samples come like this. I kind of like this industrial kind of feel. Right, I'm finally into the packet. And uh, we have a card. We'll see if the notes are on there. And no, uh, I think it's just showcasing all of the fragrances in Freddie's line. This is obviously the most recent one. So this is the sixth one, I believe, from looking at that. This is the sixth one. And it's the ingredients, not the notes on the back. So in very, very tiny writing, you got the ingredients for all of the perfume. So someone else's flowers, here's a sample, nice little label on it there. Juice is kind of a green, greeny colour, greeny, yellowy green. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to go straight on skin. I am clean, fresh from the shower. So we're going to go on the back of my hand. And, okay, we now have some juice on my hand. Now I haven't seen the notes. I've looked at Freddie's Instagram and he's described this as a bitter green. I think there's supposed to be a note of vase water, bitter green stems, flowers, I guess, and hyacinths. I don't know what other flowers are gonna be in here. Definitely get the greenery watery kind of green but bitter as he describes and if i was gonna guess what flowers i'd say it kind of makes me think a bit of daffodils whether or not there's some narcissus in here i have no idea but i'm i'm feeling sort of daffodilly here very green just oh no I don't know why I did that. It's like a very jerky reaction there. <laughs> it's green, but it's it's not too bitter. It's, I was expecting it to be bracingly green, but it's not bracingly bitter, unpleasant green because I don't love green in perfume. I mean, I don't mind it sometimes, but I don't always love it, especially if it goes very bitter or very dry. And this doesn't feel, I did it again. I don't know what's going on with my arm. <laughs> I did it again. Um, this doesn't feel too gr too dry. So it doesn't feel like, often when people want a green effect in fragrances, they might use galbanum. And I don't like galbanum as a note. I find that very dry. It could be in here, but if it is, it's really like, it's very well balanced with other notes. So it's not, it's, it's not taken over and made it really dry. So yeah, I think I get mostly green, but I do get something that I really like, something really pleasant mixed amongst it. It's almost like, um, it's making me think of watercolor paintings. Um, Imagine a watercolour garden. That's what I'm getting. And I really like it actually. It's got a little hint of sweetness. I'm thinking almost like a hay-like sweetness. So nothing like a vanilla at the moment, nothing too obviously sweet, but you know how warm hay can give off a really nice sort of sweet scent. Yeah, it's making me think of warm hay. It's very cosy, actually. So I'm getting this watercolour, wild garden feel. But also I think of um, um, maybe more of a uh, countryside fields and hay and dewy grass at the same time. 
There's definitely some things in here I like. I might be getting a hint of iris. I feel like I might be picking up some ionones, which are in violet, generally in the um, violety type. What I'm saying is I feel like I'm picking up a little bit of a violety tone and maybe slash oris tone, which I like. I like you very much. -y. Yeah, it's reminding me of some things that I really like and I know that they are things that have violet and iris in them. But it doesn't smell really violety and it doesn't smell like Palmer violets. It's more of a, a bit of a violet note mixing in with everything else, if that makes sense. It's quite possible that this is my favourite Freddie Albright in fragrance so far, despite the fact that it's listed as a bitter green fragrance, which is generally not my taste. There's so much more to this than just that, for sure. It smells very natural. I'm not picking up on any anything that... Those particular notes I really don't like. I'm not picking up on any of those kind of scratchy, dry, woody aroma chemicals that I don't like. I can't find them here. I find, I find things that make me think of nature, which is great. I like that a lot. It's a very calming fragrance. It's very soothing. It's comforting. It's not rich but it's not very light and it's not effervescent as such. It's, it's just very gentle. Yeah, it just makes me, it does make me think of gardens and the countryside, but without any of the stinky parts of the countryside, very much just the, the um, greenery, greenery and hay and maybe wildflowers. It's a very grounded fragrance, so it's not sharp and screechy. It's not bright and, um, as I say, sort of fizzy. It's very smooth, it's very gentle. Rolling country hills. Love it, I really, really like that. Well done, Freddie, I think that's a brilliant addition to your collection. Can't wait to see how it develops. So I am now going to move on to the next thing. I received a lovely package from 4160 Tuesdays and Sarah McCartney got in touch and she said that she'd like to send me something and it is this. It's called Cherry Who? Cherry Who? And I have never heard of it. Oh, it's, it's a parfum. I'd never heard of it. I know nothing about it. Uh, I've got a lovely little note. Uh, I won't read you the whole note, but it was very sweet. As she said, you're on my not an influencer, just a very nice person list. And then at the bottom it says, no assumptions about sharing on your media, which is lovely. And of course I'm going to share uh, because I want to, and I love to share everything, maybe too much sometimes, but definitely love to share about perfume. So we will get into it. I've got some information on the back. So, okay, we are in. So what I love about 4160 Tuesdays is they do so many different sizes. So you can just get little ones. These, this is a 15 milliliter. And, and the prices aren't bad at all for a, a small artisan brand. I think they are excellently priced. So Cherry Who, we have cherry trees growing in West London, but their beautiful fluffy pale pink blossom doesn't have an aroma. We imagined one for them, blended with wafts of dark ripe cherry fruit. Now, I mean, it sounds amazing. Cherry does seem to be trending at the moment. Obviously there was Lost Cherry a few years ago from Tom Ford, and there's definitely been quite a few cherry fragrances since. So let's go straight onto skin. She did mention, I think, I saw it mentioned somewhere that there's ionones in here, which I just mentioned before, which are what you get, to, what you use to make violet smells. And I'm not sure if she put that in the email or if it's in this letter. 
It's got a violet undercurrent as it takes ionones to make a cherry. That's what it says. That's where I got ionones from. She knows I like ionones. She likes that. Sarah likes ionones as well. And that's actually what led me. Actually, 4160 Tuesdays, their blog, Sarah's blog many years ago about ionones, about violet, is what led me not only to 4160 Tuesdays, but to niche perfumery in general. Because I found that and then I uh, got samples and started Googling and that's where I found fragrance reviews and, you know, the rest is history. So I have, I have 4160 Tuesdays to thank to bring me to this crazy world of um, niche indie artisan perfume. What do we get? What do we get? Definitely smells fruity and powdery. And there's a little hint of like a sharp pinkness, a sharp pinkness, but not too sharp. And it's blended in with the lovely powdery stuff. Yes, it definitely smells a little floral in a sweet kind of pink flowers girly way which would kind of work with the cherry blossom it's not as watery as some cherry blossom fragrances i smelt before i'm thinking of the one from mdci uh forgotten what it's called uh, if you remember put it in the comments below that's kind of a very fresh and light floral this has more substance to it and it does almost go almondy, which I really like. So cherry and almond can definitely cross, I think. Sometimes uh, the smell of cherry can smell a bit like almond and vice versa. And then of course you have, as uh, Sarah put in the note, there's uh, violet ionones, violet type nuances. So I do feel like I'm picking up on um, an almond-like note um, where that comes from. I don't know, is it a Tonka? Is it a heliotrope? It doesn't smell like heliotrope exactly because heliotrope can sometimes be mildly annoying to me. I don't know why. Uh, but then there's other, there's other things that can get almond from as well. And it doesn't smell like, it's not really sharp and jarring. It's, it's all very well rounded. So it's, so it's this kind of rich, almost cherry like jam. It's actually quite rich, but it's powdery. And it's a little marzipan e without being too sweet. But then it's got this tartness to it, which stops it from being too sweet and really kind of like keeps it a little fresh. It's really, really nice. And it has a mineral touch, a little earthy, um, not earthy, mineral like Flintstones. Not Fred and Wilma, but actual Flintstones from the floor. That mineral type scent could almost be like a petrichor kind of ish note, that sort of mineral feel. Flintstones, rain on pavement, that kind of thing. I love that by the way. So it's definitely got quite a few facets, even in this first few minutes of wear. It's sweet because you have got the uh, fruity, sort of cherry-ish, cherry jam-ish type smell mixed with something a little bit like marzipan, but then balanced by a little tart sharpness, which is possibly part of the cherry accord. So it, the cherry's not completely ripe. There's like, or maybe it's a jar, a jar of cherry jam but there's a few cherries that made it in that are that weren't ripe so there's a tartness 
from that. So it's very, it's not too sweet. It's really interesting. I really like that. It's it's soft. It's fluffy. It's powdery. It's got so much happening all at once, but nothing is fighting for attention and nothing is standing out and um, shouting. It's, it's all very beautifully playing together. Yeah, I really, really like that. Interesting to see where it will go. It's probably not quite as sweet as I might be making out. It's not really, really sweet. It really isn't. It's not sugary sweet. It's possible there's some vanilla in there. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a little bit, but not too much. But it's really beautifully balanced. So yes, it's definitely got some sweetness, but it really isn't as sweet as you might expect based on me talking about marzipan. It, it's, it's almost like it's just a little bit of marzipan like you just, you know you can buy a block of marzipan let's imagine we just squeezed a little bit off the end of the block and then we mixed it in with much more cherries and flowers and um and flintstones <laughs> and powder so the marzipan bit is only a pinch that's what i'm saying it's just a little pinch but it's really lovely I like that very, very, very much. So let's now move on to the final thing I'm gonna talk about. And it is a hair mask, but don't worry, we still have to talk about fragrance because this is from Panna London. So Panna London got in touch and they wanted to send me this hair mask. And I was like, oh yeah, thanks, that'd be really nice. It's called Holy Grail Keratin Mask, my hair. It's actually really out of condition at the moment. It's very difficult to stop it looking frizzy. The curls are sort of like dying at the ends. I've just had it cut, but it is still just not in a good place right now. So um, be great to see how this goes. But we're talking about the smell and the smell of this is, it's a tuberose scented hair mask. It's actually based on their tuberose for knee uh, fragrance and as soon as I smelled it I was like yeah that's a sweet tuberose I can smell exotic florals tuberose mainly but there's definitely sort of like a fruitiness and a vanilla in there and I asked so I didn't know anything about it and it's not on their website as yet so I did ask Panna and they confirmed that it is the scent of their tuberose vanille so if you love their tuberose vanille perfume, then there is, hopefully, or will be soon, it's not on their website as yet, there will be a matching hair mask. So I'll be testing it out. I don't know how long the scent will last on the actual hair, but it will certainly be an absolute treat to have my hair coated in this gorgeous, rich, sweet, exotic scent. So that is the Panna London, and it says, Holy Grail Keratin Mask. Key actives are encapsulated keratin, baboab, baboab extract, organic mon, mongogo oil, and meadow foam seed oil. And it's for dry, damaged, thinning hair. Well, it's not thinning, but it's definitely dry and damaged. So thank you to Panna London for sending me that. And it does smell delicious. Um, and let's give you a little update now on Freddie's one that has really developed. Do you know what it's making me think of? I'm going to show you. I only sprayed this on my hand earlier today before my shower. Eau Sauvage, the original Eau Sauvage from Christian Dior. It's reminding me a little bit of that. There's definitely a, a bitterness in here, and I'd say it's coming out now more. So it's starting to feel more bitter. But I think it's something a little lemony in here. Not necessarily lemon exactly, because I would have thought the lemon would have come out immediately. 
but it's only coming out now. So something that's kind of lemony, which might be why I'm, I'm thinking of this, um, but it's more than just that. I would say it's starting to take a turn towards a more classic men's fragrance a little bit. Maybe just because it is quite green, but it's all greeny yellow. Like it's not, um, it's not dark green and it's not even bright green. It's a faded green that's almost yellow. That's the colour that I'm getting. Faded. Um, I'm thinking of yellow. I don't know what plant it would be. They have really thin yellow leaves. I don't know if it, I don't think it flowers. But then imagine that they've sort of died a little bit and they've turned yellow. I don't know where this is coming from, but it's just, that's what it's given me. Yellowed. And I, yeah, I guess, not exactly mouldy, but Freddie was going for vase water. Now, when you have uh, vase water, unless you change it every single day, it does start to get that slightly kind of mouldy smell. And I kind of get that a little bit here. But it's not like disgusting. It's not mould. It's not mould. But you know how like the vase water, when it's stagnant, does just give off a bit of a smell with the flowers as well at the same time? I don't know. I don't know. It's very, very interesting. I think really worth checking out, especially if you like green fragrances. If you like bitter notes. And you want something a little different, a little unusual and a little artistic. But this is completely wearable though. I'm not saying it's not wearable. There's nothing like weird. There's nothing too funky. There's nothing jarring. It's really, really interesting. So that's Freddie Albrighton's uh, Someone Else's Flowers on this. And then, mm, and then Cherry Who? <laughs> Cherry Who? So final thoughts on Cherry Who. It's definitely sweet, sweet. It's definitely sweetening up on my skin. It's getting richer, but not really thick and rich and sickening at all, just a little deeper. And I also feel like I'm getting a hint of woods, just a really gentle, subtle backbone of a sort of like, um, I don't know, like a clean woods, nothing, nothing smoky, nothing, um, nothing dark to woods, but not white woods, a normal kind of, I, I'm picturing, I guess I'm picturing cherry tree and the, uh, the trunk of the tree. So just a basic tree trunk kind of woods smell. Yeah. So as much as it's kind of it's getting a little richer on my skin, it's also still very well balanced between being too sweet or um, or not sweet enough. It's a really nice balance. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I will put links to all the three companies I've mentioned in the description box below. Do go and check them out, support our indie brands. They really need your help at the moment. Times are really hard, I know for everyone, but if you're in the mood for shopping or sampling perfumes, the best way to go is indie because you're actually supporting real people and keeping people in jobs. So it's a win-win. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video.